Get ready to dive into a world where nightmares roamed free and survival was a deadly game. Imagine land crocs the size of trucks hunting after the dinosaurs, saber-toothed cats with razor-sharp fangs tearing through flesh, and towering beasts that ruled the untamed wilds of every continent. From Australia's colossal predators to Africa's bone-crunching monsters and the icy terrors of prehistoric Antarctica, these creatures were the kings of the world before humans. Brace yourself for the most terrifying predators ever to walk the earth. This is no ordinary history lesson. It's pure, heart-pounding horror. Let's start with prehistoric Africa. What could be more terrifying than a wild African safari? If you can think of nothing, boy, you're in for a surprise. A similar safari, but only a few thousand to millions of years ago, would have given you a heart attack on the spot. And trust me, that would have been the good way to go. Africa already has a lot of the world's deadliest animals to its name. From 5,000-pound rhinos and the largest African lions to Nile crocodiles that kill over 3,000 people a year, it's not exactly a chill spot. Not to mention the sneaky killers like the tsetse fly, which causes African sleeping sickness. And of course, the infamous mosquito, known for being just as dangerous as it is annoying. The final nail in the coffin, though, is the black mamba, whose single bite has enough venom to kill 12 grown men within an hour. If that's what Africa looks like right now, just imagine what it would have been at a time when dinosaurs were the most normal thing out there. The good news is you don't need to, because we'll take you on a personal trip through prehistoric Africa, at your own risk, of course. So let's start with quite possibly the most unique creature on the list. I have to warn you before we start, this might make you fear frogs. And if you don't already, then you just haven't heard of the devil frog. Bezel Bufo, often called the devil frog, or frog from hell, was a monstrous amphibian that prowled ancient Madagascar during the late Cretaceous period, around 66 to 70 million years ago. And yes, we are talking about a frog, but just one on a pretty high dose of steroids. This colossal frog, reaching lengths of up to 16 inches or 41 centimeters and weighing about 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms, was a true giant among its amphibian kin. But the most striking feature of Bezel Bufo was its massive head, adorned with a prominent cranial shield that likely provided protection and possibly served as a display structure. The bones of its skull bore a wrinkled outer surface, meaning it could have had bony scales or scutes as if it wasn't already intimidating. However, inside this somewhat beautiful head were the gates of hell themselves. With its expansive mouth and extremely powerful jaws, Bezel Bufo likely boasted an impressive bite force, estimated to be between 500 to 2,200 newtons. This means Bezel Bufo was extremely well equipped to tackle large prey, including lizards, small vertebrates, and even hatchling dinosaurs. Still, Bezel Bufo was just a frog in the end, even if it ate dinosaurs. What really could have made you cry, though, was this hyena was not your average hyena that feeds off of other predator scraps. Pachycrasuto, also known as the giant hyena or short-faced hyena, was a very formidable predator that roamed Africa and Eurasia around 1.5 million years ago. Think of a modern hyena, but just much larger and much scarier. Standing at about 41 inches or 105 centimeters tall at the shoulder and measuring around 5.5 feet or 1.7 meters in length, with a weight of up to 286 pounds or 130 kilograms, Pachycrasuta was truly a giant among hyenas. But even deadlier than its size were its powerful jaws and sharp teeth, capable of effortlessly crushing bones. This adaptation allowed the giant hyena to prey on animals such as antelopes, zebras, and even early humans. However, despite its size, Pachycrasuta was simply not built for chasing prey over long distances. Instead, it likely relied on its strength and formidable bite force to overpower its prey. That makes it all the more horrifying, because it'd have used any opportunity available and sprung up on you in a second. While you might have a chance against the modern hyena, you couldn't have survived Pachycrasuta's first bite. Still, the Pachycrasuta did have this one weakness, and now that you know about it, maybe you'd be better suited at surviving the… I take back what I said, because once you hear what this beast preyed on, 
you'll kiss all chances of survival goodbye. Inostracevia was a terrifying predator from the late Permian period, with total body lengths reaching up to 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters, and towering over its prey with long narrow skulls measuring up to 24 inches or 60 centimeters in length, and its weight did not disappoint either. Weighing in at around 550 pounds or 250 kilograms, this beast was the largest Gorgonopsian known to have ever existed. But what made Inostrin Sevia truly fearsome were its powerful jaws and long saber-like canines, with some reaching up to 6 inches or 15 centimeters in length. And you can bet they weren't just for show, they were perfectly adapted for holding and tearing the skin of their prey. With a jaw capable of a massive gape, Inostrin Sevia likely delivered lethal bites to its victims, similar to the theoretical killing technique of the saber-toothed cats. Living in the late Permian period, Inostrin Sevia shared its habitat with and preyed on creatures like Scutosaurus, a 2,560-pound or 1,160-kilogram armored reptile. Regardless, it probably would have needed such extreme hunting skills against humans because they would have just been paralyzed in horror at the strange sight of this creature. Still, it definitely couldn't have confused them more than the I'll give it to you straight, this is just a badger, or at least one of its early ancestors. But it didn't quite match the size of the mustelids we have today. Ecorus ekakaran was a mustelid from the late Miocene Kenya, which stood out with its imposing stature, reaching heights of 24 inches or 60 centimeters at the shoulders and weighing over 100 pounds or 45 kilograms. This made it comparable in size to a wolf, towering over its modern relative, the honey badger. And, unlike typical modern mustelids, Echorus had a unique build, resembling that of leopards, with long legs built for swift running, rather than the short bursts of speed seen in smaller weasels. With its feeler-like tooth pattern and strong runner's elbow, this badger was actually a hyperconivore, specializing in hunting down prey with speed and precision. Its hunting strategy likely involved stalking and chasing down larger animals, such as the three-toed horse, Eurynathohippus, and the formidable large pig, Nine Zacharus, a badger feasting on a horse. I bet that's a first for you. You know what won't be a first though? A cat terrorizing humans. So up next, we have, also called the false saber-toothed cat or terrible cat. This so-called cat prowled the ancient landscapes of Africa and Eurasia around 5 million years ago. Now, with a body weight of up to 200 pounds or 90 kilograms, a length of 5 feet or 1.5 meters, and a height of 31 inches or 80 centimeters, it wasn't the biggest of cats. But its haunting teeth more than made up for it. See, unlike today's big cats, Dinophilus stood out with its enlarged front canines. Though not as large as those of true saber-toothed cats like Smilodon, these dagger-like teeth combined with its robust body made Dinophilus a formidable predator capable of taking down prey much larger than itself. Its hunting style, similar to that of the modern leopard, relied on stealth and speed to ambush unsuspecting victims, including zebras and even early humans. In fact, Dinophilus's notoriety comes from its long association with hunting and eating early hominids like Homo habilis and Australopithecus afarensis meaning it might just have been one of the first predators to terrorize our kind. This has been proved by the Dinophilus remains found near the Paranthropus fossil skulls in South Africa, a few of which have peculiar twin holes in their skulls, matching the Dinophilus upper canine's spacing almost exactly. So yeah, it didn't just eat humans, it pierced their skulls. And with its immense strength, Dinophilus hunted other larger animals as well including mammoth calves and young and old mastodons. But I guess hunting ape-like humans isn't that big of an achievement. However, this next animal could have easily taken on even today's humongous humans. Better practice its name, because this ancient beast will go on your list of coolest prehistoric animals ever. Simba Kubwa Kuto Africa, the great lion from Africa, roamed the earth during the early Miocene, around 23 million years ago in what is now Kenya. This extinct mammal belonged to the family Hyenaloridae and was a true giant of its time, possibly surpassing even the modern polar bear in size. With a length of up to 12 feet or 3.8 meters and standing at an impressive height of 51 inches or 130 centimeters at the shoulder, Simba Kubwa could have weighed up to 2,200 pounds 
or a thousand kilograms, making it a true behemoth in its ancient habitat. But despite its name, which translates to big lion in Swahili, Simba Kubwa was not related to modern lions, but was instead a member of a group of extinct mammals called hyenodonts. And you guessed it, these creatures weren't any less than the lions. With their formidable bone-crushing jaws and specialized teeth, hyenodonts were among the dominant predators of their time, preying on creatures such as rhinos and early proboscideans like mastodons. But considering its massive weight, which seems more like a burden, how exactly did Simba Kubwa take on these giants? Well, one of the most striking features of Simba Kubwa was its powerful bite. Facilitated by its unique skull structure and specialized teeth, Unlike modern carnivores, which typically have one pair of meat-slicing teeth, Simba Kubwa had three pairs. Safe to say, this beast had slicing blades for teeth. This allowed it to easily crush bones and take down large prey. Just imagine how scarier it could have been if it were an actual lion. While there's no way to find out, you can kind of guess how it'd have been as a tiger from… Remember Diego, the saber-toothed tiger from Ice Age? This tiger might resemble him in size, but it was definitely much scarier. Macarodus, also commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger, terrorized three continents, including Africa, Eurasia, and North America around two million years ago. This beast resembled most modern lions or tigers in size, measuring about 6.5 feet or 2 meters in length, and stood only at 3 feet or 1 meter at the shoulder. But don't worry, because once you hear about its teeth, it won't seem so small. What truly set Macarodus apart were its iconic long, curved canine teeth, reaching up to a staggering 7 inches or 18 centimeters in length. With its narrow skull and relatively small orbits, Macarodus possessed a striking appearance, but it was its elongated canines that struck fear into the hearts of its prey. These canines, flattened from side to side but broad from front to back, like the blade of a knife, were the perfect tools for delivering devastated killing bites. And, unlike other saber-toothed cats, Macarodus had teeth rooted firmly in its mouth, allowing it to comfortably fit its long canines, while still maintaining effective hunting capabilities. But despite these deadly characteristics, Macarodus was an ambush predator, which again makes it even deadlier. Macarodus likely utilized its powerful jaws and long canines to swiftly dispatch its prey particularly slower moving animals like horses and rhinoceroses. While these may not be A-tier prey, Macarodus still had to compete with much deadlier predators for these animals. In its open woodland habitat, Macarodus competed with massive predators like bears, bear dogs, and fellow Macarodons for food. And yes, I said bear dogs. If you're confused, stay tuned till the end of the video, cause we'll let you in on one of these fearsome creatures as well. For now though, You'll have to agree Macarodus was pretty unique, but it certainly didn't compare to… Think of a creature resembling the saber-toothed cat, Smilodon, but slightly smaller and yet just as deadly. That was Megantherion, a fearsome predator of the late Neocene to Pleistocene epochs, prowled the ancient landscapes of Africa, Eurasia, and North America. And when I say Megantherion was unique, I mean it. Megantherion stood at around 31 inches or 80 centimeters tall at the shoulder and measured about 4.6 feet or 1.4 meters in length, weighing in at 265 pounds or 120 kilograms. Now, even though it looked like Smilodon, it was actually built like a robust jaguar, boasting stocky forelimbs and powerful neck muscles designed for delivering a devastating shearing bite. Its long, curved canines were its signature weapons perfectly adapted for piercing the throats of its prey. With these formidable tools, Megantherion hunted large herbivores like antelopes and gazelles, using its agility and powerful limbs to leap onto their backs and deliver fatal bites to their neck. The craziest thing though is that despite its size, it was likely capable of climbing trees, giving it a huge advantage over its prey. There was literally no running away from this beast. And when it did catch up to its prey, at least it delivered a swift death. Using its long saber teeth, it would deliver a precise throat bite, severing vital nerves and blood vessels, ensuring a swift and efficient kill. If you're sitting unfazed, thinking it never got near humans anyway, I'll let you know it probably feasted on your ancestors. Yes, 
evidence suggests that Megantherion even interacted with early hominids, with a few poor fossils showing wounds inflicted by its saber teeth. I know it's not the best way to go, but trust me, those hominids would have begged for a Megantherion if they ever got caught in the jaws of. Named after conservationist John Thorpe Jarnison, this extinct species of crocodile was a true titan of its time, potentially reaching lengths of up to 27 feet or 8 meters, making it the largest known true crocodile to have ever roamed the earth. I say true crocodile because there's something similar and yet far bigger and terrifying at the end of the video, so stay tuned till then. Coming back to this beast though, the skull alone was 33 inches or 84 centimeters long. This monstrous crocodile would have dwarfed its modern-day relatives, resembling a heavyset Nile crocodile, but with even bigger proportions. With its massive skull and powerful jaws, Crocodilus thorpjohnsoni was without a doubt the apex predator of its environment, ruling over a realm where early humans and other large animals were part of its potential prey base. Feeding on plentiful large prey, including humans, which may have fallen victim to its ambushes at watering holes, Crocodilus thorpjohnsoni likely played a terrifying role in the lives of our ancient ancestors. The absence of direct evidence, such as bite marks on human remains, speaks to the efficient and devastating feeding habits of this behemoth. This means that even though there's no direct evidence of them eating humans, the fact is that it probably would have swallowed stones to crush the bones in its stomach and pass everything out at the other end. This chilling fact just might make it hard for this next creature to top Thorbajan Sonai. But its confusing yet absolutely horrifying look might get the job done. So next on the list is, if you thought dogs were cute, you just haven't run into this one. And boy, you should be grateful. The bear dogs prowled the ancient landscapes during the late Miocene epoch, spanning from Eurasia. And yes, you should really take the name literally, because this creature resembled a mix between a bear and a dog, but with a much more terrifying demeanor. It definitely wasn't your average canine. The Amphicyon was a bone-crushing predator, weighing in at over 400 pounds or 180 kilograms, measuring about 6 feet or 1.8 meters in length and standing tall at 40 inches or 100 centimeters. Even that wasn't all there was to it. Amphicyon also had a robust build with a thick neck and powerful jaws. Its skull was designed to crush bone and its teeth, sharp as daggers, were perfect for tearing through flesh. You know what the biggest advantage of having such teeth is? You can tear through and eat just about anything. So despite its formidable appearance, Amphicyon wasn't picky when it came to meals. It feasted on a variety of large mammals, including horses, deer, and antelopes. But let's be honest, you can't really be an apex predator until you have a very hard-to-get special diet. Luckily for that, you don't need to look further than Last on our list of saber-toothed predators is this fearsome creature from the Pleistocene era. I mean, just the unique appearance would have left you trembling in fear, because one of Homotherium's most striking features was the imbalance between its front and hind legs. With long front limbs like those of a modern hyena, this unique body shape, combined with its squat hind limbs, gave Homotherium a formidable appearance, more like a relentless hunter than a typical cat. Nicknamed the scimitar cat due to the shape of its teeth, Homotherium was built for one purpose – hunting. With its long curved canine teeth, it could deliver deadly bites to its prey, ranging from early Homo sapiens to massive woolly mammoths. While the exact hunting methods of Homotherium remain debated among scientists, it is believed that this predator may have hunted in packs, utilizing coordinated ambushes to take down large herbivores like bison and horses. But it wasn't just its hunting prowess that made Homotherium a nightmare. This powerful and agile predator could reach weights of up to 550 pounds or 250 kilograms and stand over 4 feet or 1.15 meters tall at the shoulder, making it a formidable force on the prehistoric savannas of Africa. Its strong forelimbs and highly efficient respiratory system allowed it to run at high speeds for short distances, enabling it to chase down prey and deliver a fatal bite straight to the throat. So it might seem like Homotherium could have taken on anything, but trust me when I say it's lucky it didn't run into the already extinct. If there's one animal that would have given Homotherium second thoughts, it's this one. 
Agriotherium, often dubbed the sickle-toothed bear, was a bone-crushing nightmare, horrifying every living soul in South Africa around 10 million years ago. To put it simply, Agriotherium was almost a small car on four legs. It boasted an impressive size that rivals even today's largest bears, a massive body stretching up to 9 feet or 2.7 meters in length, 5.5 feet or 1.65 meters in height, and weighing a shocking 1,980 pounds or 900 kilograms. But what truly set Agrotherium apart were its unique features. Unlike its bear cousins, it had longer legs and a more compact face, giving it a sleeker, more agile build. Its wide, short jaws packed an incredible bite force, capable of even crushing bone with ease. With a bite force of 4,500 Newton, it might just have had the strongest bite force out of all the mammals of its time. These adaptations made Agriotherium a masterful hunter, and with a body mass greater than most large undulates, including horses, bovines, camelids, and rhinoceroses, it's likely that Agriotherium could have preyed on these as well. However, it was still a bear, and in the end, an omnivore. So chances are, if this beast was in the mood for berries, you probably would have escaped with your life. With this next animal, you couldn't even have thought of running away, since you'd be paralyzed in fear. Lastly, think of a creature so terrifying, it even makes some dinosaurs, including the T-Rex, seem tame by comparison. That was Sarcosuchus imperator, a crocodile-like reptile also called the colossal supercroc of the Cretaceous period. This ancient predator, thankfully extinct, truly ruled the rivers of Africa over 113 million years ago. Now, I'm not saying it measured up to the T-Rex in size, although it was quite huge, measuring over 40 feet or 12 meters long, with the skull alone being 6 feet or 1.8 meters and weighing over 16,000 pounds or 8 tons. But you'll see in a second how exactly it was more than a T-Rex. See, size wasn't the only thing that set Sarcosuchus apart. Armed with a terrifying set of backward-pointing teeth, this aquatic beast was built to take down prey much larger than itself. So it's not surprising that it had a very powerful bite force, possibly up to 9 tons, far exceeding any modern-day crocodile, and is one of the most powerful bite forces on Earth. This bite force even exceeds that of T-Rex. That's why it's also probable that dinosaurs may have been on its menu, and the credit doesn't go to its teeth alone. Its hunting technique likely involved latching onto unsuspecting victims, dragging them into the water to be drowned. Living in vast river systems across Africa and South America, Sarcosuchus shared its watery domain with a myriad of ancient creatures, from coelacanths to dinosaurs like Ludosaurus and Uranosaurus, all of which likely fell to its bite. In the end, one thing is clear, even if you get a time machine, there's no way you could land up in a safe Africa. Any year you end up in, you'll be getting chills down your spine as soon as you step out, because prehistoric Africa at every point was pure nightmare fuel. Before the last ice age ended, North America was a land of terrifying giants. And by the end of this video, you'll be glad that you only have to hear about them and not run into one. We're talking dire wolves, massive armadillo-like beasts, and colossal sloths. The mystery of why these animals vanished around 10,000 years ago keeps scientists on their toes to this day. So, in this video, we're looking at 15 creatures from prehistoric North America that would haunt your nightmares. Let's start with one animal that makes today's lions look like, well, overgrown kittens. This was the saber-toothed cat. Also known as Smilodon fatalis, this cat prowled North America from about 400,000 to 11,000 years ago. This feline weighed between 350 and 620 pounds, or 160 to 280 kilograms, stretching about 5.75 feet or 1.75 meters from rump to snout. That's without even counting the tail. In comparison, today's African lions, Panthera leo, are its closest modern relatives in size. Like lions, Smilodon fatalis was a top predator, but its build was different. It had shorter, sturdier limbs, built more like a bodybuilder than a sprinter. The scariest bit about it, though, were its teeth. The saber-toothed cat's canine teeth were nearly 7 inches or 18 centimeters long and serrated like steak knives, perfect for slicing through the thick hides of its prey. 
Just think of a lion with literal daggers hanging from its mouth. Now, these were necessary because unlike the lions of today, this cat lived in a world full of gigantic herbivores and other formidable predators, making survival a daily challenge. Now for a coyote that could give wolves today a run for their money. When you think of a coyote, it feels like familiar territory, right? We still have them running around in jungles, but boy, have I got news for you. Sometimes familiar animals can have surprising and fearsome pasts, and the Ice Age coyote is a perfect example of just that. Also known as the Pleistocene coyote, this prehistoric creature was a beast compared to the coyotes we know today. It weighed between 33 and 55 pounds, or 15 to 25 kilograms, with some individuals matching the size of modern-day wolves. In contrast, today's coyotes are smaller, tipping the scales at just 22 to 40 pounds, or 10 to 18 kilograms. But the Pleistocene coyote wasn't just larger, it had a thicker, deeper skull and robust teeth designed for tearing into meat, indicating it hunted larger prey and had a more carnivorous diet than its modern descendants. While today's coyotes are known for their adaptability and cunning, thriving in urban and rural environments alike, the Pleistocene coyote was a specialist in a world of giants. It had to be tougher and more capable of taking down big game to survive in the harsh, competitive environment of the Ice Age. Also present in that environment was a bison that looked nothing like you've ever seen before. Bison Antiquus roamed North America from about 240,000 to 10,000 years ago. This prehistoric giant was 25% larger than its modern descendants, standing at an impressive 7.5 feet or 2.3 meters high and stretching 15 feet or 4.6 meters long. Weighing in at a whopping 3,500 pounds or 1,600 kilograms, you can bet it took up lots of space in the Ice Age plains. One of the most striking features of the ancient bison was its horns, which were longer than those of today's American bison. It thrived in a world teeming with other massive creatures and formidable predators. So, its size and strength helped it survive against threats from the likes of saber-toothed cats and dire wolves. Its large muscular build and longer legs made it a formidable force on the open plains, allowing it to migrate across vast distances in search of food. These ancient bison are believed to be direct ancestors of the American bison. Fossil evidence indicates that as the climate changed and the Ice Age ended, Bison Antiquus gradually evolved into the smaller but still robust bison we see today. Their diet consisted mainly of grasses, much like their modern counterparts. However, the Ice Age landscape offered a different variety of flora, and these giant grazers had to compete with other megafauna for resources. Luckily for them, their large size allowed them to consume large quantities of vegetation, which was crucial for maintaining their massive bodies. Up next is the ancient walrus, a colossal creature that ruled the shallow seas of prehistoric California. In 1980, researchers uncovered the near-complete remains of Gomphotheria pugnax, an extinct giant pinniped in Southern California. This magnificent beast lived between 8.5 million to 5 million years ago, during the late Miocene epoch. G. Pugnax had a massive 18.5 inch long or 47 centimeter skull, decorated with large upper and lower canine tusks. These tusks weren't just for show. The ancient walrus likely used them to stir up sediment on the seafloor, searching for food like hard-shelled invertebrates, such as mollusks. These acted pretty much like metal detectors searching for hidden treasures. G. Pugnax was a huge, heavy-bodied pinniped, boasting a high forehead, particularly in males, reminiscent of the California sea lion. It had small eyes, which might seem unusual, but were perfectly suited to its lifestyle in the murky waters where it hunted. Compared to today's walruses, which already impress with their size and tusks, G. Pugnax was a real giant. While modern walruses use their tusks primarily for hauling themselves onto ice and for social interactions, the ancient G. Pugnax had a more active role in foraging, using its tusks to navigate and hunt in its environment. Now let's get back on land, where the true ruler of the wilds lived. This was the scimitar-toothed cat. Also known as Homotherium, it was a formidable predator during the Pleistocene era. This ancient feline was equipped with large canine teeth, powerful forelimbs, and a sloping back, making it a specialized hunter capable of taking down large prey. Originally found in Eurasia, this ancient beast expanded its range during the last ice age, 
by crossing the Bering Land Bridge into North America. Fossil evidence of this predator has been discovered at significant sites such as the La Brea Tar Pits in Southern California, as well as in other parts of the United States including Alaska, Idaho and Texas. The cat's adaptation for hunting included its large optic bulb, indicating keen eyesight suited for tracking and capturing prey. Its robust forelimbs and sloping back suggest a muscular build, optimized for speed and power during pursuits. Now, while you may sometimes wish for these animals to still be around today, the truth is, encountering a homotherium in the wild would have been a chilling experience. Nevertheless, its presence in North America during a time when mammoths and giant ground sloths roamed suggests it was a key predator in the ecosystem, a hunter among other apex predators of the era. But there was one giant that rarely made any predators prey. Taking it down would have been next to impossible. This was the Mastodon. Mastodons or mammoth made their grand entrance into North America about 15 million years ago, crossing over the Bering Strait land bridge, long before their more famous relatives, the mammoths. This journey set the stage for a long tenure on the continent. Now compared to mammoths, mastodons were a lot more primitive. Their teeth, for instance, were less complex. They had cone-shaped cusps on their molars, perfect for crunching on the leaves, twigs, and branches of deciduous and conifer trees. Mastodons also had a taste for wetland plants, which were less abrasive than the grasses and terrestrial plants mammoths often consumed. Physically, mastodons and mammoths were quite similar, yet distinct. Both could reach impressive heights between 7 and 14 feet, or 2 to 4 meters, and had shaggy coats to keep them warm in cold climates. However, mastodons were generally shorter and more robust than their mammoth cousins. One of the most striking differences between the two were their tusks. Mastodons had long, curved tusks that could grow up to 16 feet or 4.9 meters in length. In contrast, mammoths had shorter, curlier tusks, giving them a different, though equally impressive appearance. Despite their similarities and differences, both these creatures were iconic megafauna of the Ice Age, roaming the vast prehistoric landscapes of North America. Their presence, diet, and physical traits offered a truly amazing glimpse into the diversity of life that once thrived on our planet. Today, the remains of these majestic creatures continue to tell us more about a bygone era when nightmarish giants roamed the Earth. All these hundreds of thousands of years ago, North America was also home to the formidable Arctodocimus, commonly known as the short-faced bear. This massive bear roamed across diverse landscapes, from forests and plains to tundras and grasslands extending its range all the way to the subtropical woodlands in Florida. These short-faced bears were giants compared to today's grizzly bears, towering over them by a significant margin. Their size alone would have been enough to strike fear into anyone who encountered them. The male stood up to 3.4 meters or 11 feet tall, and that's almost two fully grown men stacked on top of each other. Now, despite its name, the short-faced bear didn't actually have a short face. The truth is, its face appeared shorter due to its extraordinarily long limbs. These adaptations made it look like a grizzly bear on stilts, with legs that were at least one-third longer than those of modern bears. This unique body structure might have allowed it to run at high speeds, though the exact reasons for its long legs remain a mystery. This massive bear's diet and behavior also remain subjects of ongoing research, but its impressive size and range make it a fascinating creature in the prehistoric world. So, whether it's chasing down prey or foraging for berries, the short-faced bear was undoubtedly one of the most formidable creatures of its time, dominating a variety of habitats across North America. Now on to a more peaceful family of animals, the stunning North American horses. When European settlers arrived in the New World, they introduced horses to a continent that had already known the thunder of hooves long ago. Ancient horses roamed North America from about 50 million to 11,000 years ago, but they vanished at the end of the last ice age. One of the strangest things about this extinction is that they died out in North America, yet managed to survive in Eurasia and Africa, which is why we still have horses and their relatives, donkeys and asses, today. These ancient horses were an important part of the North American landscape for millions of years. They evolved here adapting to the changing climates and landscapes, and their hooves once echoed across vast plains and forests. The end of the last ice age, however, brought dramatic changes in climate and environment. 
which along with human activities, contributed to their extinction on this continent. The horses we see today, whether wild mustangs or domesticated breeds, are distant relatives of these North American inhabitants. So, if you think about it, they serve as a living link to the continent's prehistoric past, reminding us of a time when North America was a wild and untamed place, filled with extraordinary creatures, another one of which was the dire wolf. Yes, they don't just exist in Game of Thrones. These creatures were actually real. Long ago, before cities and highways stretched across the land, North America was home to this fearsome predator. These wolves, much bigger than today's grey wolves, prowled through forests and grasslands, leaving their bones scattered in places like California's La Brea Tar Pits and Wyoming's Natural Trap Cave. They were hefty creatures, weighing between 130 and 150 pounds, or 59 to 68 kilograms, about 25% heavier than today's grey wolves. But, despite their size, dire wolves had shorter legs than modern wolves, which meant they weren't built for sprinting races. These wolves also had a pretty unique history. They split off from other wolves about 5.7 million years ago, long before humans built their first homes. Unlike their relatives who traveled between Eurasia and North America, dire wolves stayed put in North America. They also didn't mix with coyotes or gray wolves either, keeping to their own kind and maintaining their genetic distinctiveness throughout their existence. Surprisingly, despite evolving separately, dire wolves behaved much like modern canines. They lived in packs, similar to how dogs, wolves, and coyotes do today. This social structure probably helped them hunt and survive in the ancient wilderness. On a final note, dire wolves were certainly big, but they're not as big as they're shown in Game of Thrones. Still nightmare material though, that doesn't change with the size. But if you think bigger is scarier, we gotta tell you, there's nothing in the world today that comes close to the 3,000 pound sloth. Unlike today's sloths, which spend most of their lives in trees, these megafauna giants like the Eremotherium and Megatherium were ground dwellers. North America was home to several species of giant sloths, with the Eremotherium being among the largest. Found predominantly in the southeastern regions along Florida and the Gulf Coast, as well as in Central and South America, these sloths favored wetter, more tropical environments. They got to be about the size of elephants. Although Eremotherium was huge, it wasn't as big as Megatherium, another giant sloth species found in South America, which dominated South America during the same period. These giant sloths had diverse diets, using their stature and ability to stand on their hind legs to reach high into trees for food. Their adaptability likely contributed to their extremely long survival compared to many other Ice Age mammals. The tales of ancient ground sloths run deep, as once President Thomas Jefferson heard about a strange claw fossil found in Ohio, and he got really curious. So, he sent a bunch of explorers to look for what he thought might be giant lions on their journey west to the Pacific. But it turns out that the claw wasn't from a lion at all. It belonged to Megalonyx, an extinct ground sloth. During warmer times called interglacials, Megalonyx even made it as far north as the Yukon and Alaska, adapting to different environments. But when it got cold again, these sloths weren't built for the chilly weather, so they headed back south where they originally came from. Similarly, another gigantic beast made its journey from the south to the north of prehistoric America. This was the Glyptodon. It came decorated with an extremely strong shell made of bony plates that acted as its shield against the dangers of the world. The closest living creature resembling it would be an armadillo, but make it colossal. Glyptodon took on a journey from South America to North America long ago. It traveled across a narrow strip of land called the Isthmus of Panama during the Ice Age. This journey took it to new lands, seeking better places to live and find food. When Glyptodon finally arrived in what is now coastal Texas and Florida, it found a paradise. There were lush forests and wide open wetlands where it could graze peacefully. And as a gentle giant that liked to munch on grasses, leaves and plants, that's exactly what it was looking for. But as time passed and the world changed, Glyptodon faced challenges it couldn't overcome. About 10,000 years ago, during shifts in climate and other changes, this amazing creature and its relatives disappeared from Earth. Their extinction is still a mystery today, much like that of the American lion. In the ancient wilderness of North America, saber-toothed cats weren't the only big cats around. Panthera atrox, the American lion, was there to give them 
tough competition. This majestic predator was not just large, it was among the largest cats ever known. And that's to say they were much, much larger than most modern lions. Standing at an impressive four feet tall at the shoulder and stretching up to eight feet in length, the American lion was slightly larger than today's African lion. These magnificent creatures were not just large, but also incredibly strong and robust, with an average weight of about 500 pounds or 226 kilograms. That's the weight of a fully grown polar bear. But the most amazing thing is, even though they were pretty heavy, these lions were still surprisingly agile and fast. They could go 35 to 40 miles per hour, about as fast as a horse. There aren't many fossil records of this animal, but evidence scattered across North America tells tales of these mighty cats. Their bones and teeth have been unearthed, from the northern reaches of Canada to the southern lands of Mexico. Scientists have long argued over the genetic kinship of these giant cats. Some argue their skulls resembles that of lions, while their jaws show similarities to jaguars and tigers. But one thing we do know is, because of its size and strength, the American lion likely preyed on large herbivores like bison and wild horses. Its powerful physique and fierce hunting abilities allowed it to thrive in diverse environments across the continent. Another prehistoric creature capable of thriving in diverse environments was the giant beaver. Also known as the Castoroides, this beaver was a true marvel of prehistoric North America. Unlike its smaller modern cousin, Castor canadensis, which typically weighs around 44 pounds or 20 kilograms, Castoroides tipped the scales at an impressive 125 pounds or 57 kilograms. That's more than double the weight of today's beavers. These ancient giants roamed across a vast territory, with their fossils found not only in the Great Lakes region, but also as far south as South Carolina and across the American Northeast. They were adaptable creatures, venturing into Alaska and the Yukon during warmer interglacial periods. However, when temperatures dropped, they retreated south to more favorable habitats. Similar to their modern counterparts, Castoroides were expert builders and engineers of their environments. Fossils of both ancient and modern beavers have been found in the same deposits, indicating they shared similar lifestyles. Despite their impressive size, which made them amongst the largest rodents ever known, the giant beavers eventually disappeared from the Earth, likely due to changes in climate and environment, as the Ice Age came to an end. Now on to the most exotic of prehistoric North America's animals, yesterday's camel. These are more famously known as camelops. Now, we often think of camels as this very exotic creature that we associate with very different places, such as sand dunes. But camels are actually native to North America around 44 million years ago, when its relatives first emerged. These early camelids gradually made their way across the continent, from the Canadian Yukon down to Mexico, adapting to various habitats including woodlands, grasslands, and wetlands. Standing impressively at about 7 feet tall, or 2.2 meters, at the shoulder, and weighing up to 1,764 pounds, or 800 kilograms, Camelops was larger than modern camels. However, it's unclear from fossil evidence whether it had the distinctive hump associated with its desert-dwelling descendants. As time passed, some members of the camelid family crossed the Bering Land Bridge into Asia around 7 million years ago, eventually giving rise to the camels we see today. More recently, others journeyed southward into South America via the newly formed Isthmus of Panama about 3 million years ago. These descendants, including llamas and guanacos, adapted and thrived in the South American landscape. Despite their ancient roots in North America, camelops eventually faced extinction. Finally, it's time to reveal the most majestic-looking prehistoric creature of all, the American cheetah. Standing a little taller than today's cheetahs, with a shoulder height of about 2.75 feet or 0.85 meters, and weighing around 156 pounds or 70 kilograms, this feline commanded respect in the whole jungle. Unlike its swift African cousin, the American cheetah wasn't built for sheer speed. Its slightly shorter legs suggested it was better at climbing than racing across the open plains. Despite this, its name, Mirasonus inexpecticus, is rich with meaning. Mira means wonderful in Latin, while asinonyx and onyx come from the Greek words related to claws. This name reflects an earlier misunderstanding about cheetahs not having retractable claws. Inexpecticus in Latin means unexpected, 
altogether giving the big cat a name that loosely translates to wonderful, unexpected cheetah with immobile claws. The story of the American cheetah unfolds millions of years ago during the Pliocene epoch, dating back between 3.2 million to 2.5 million years ago. Fossils discovered in present-day Texas provide clues to its existence and behaviors in ancient times. Sadly, like many of its fellow megafauna, the American cheetah vanished from the North American continent around 12,000 years ago. But you shouldn't be too disappointed about that, because if this creature ever caught up to you, it would tear you apart in mere seconds. In the end, the ancient days of North America were pure nightmare fuel. Even fairly innocent creatures like beavers, sloths, and horses grew to such colossal sizes that they would have been a danger to any human. And on the other hand, there are characters like the dire wolf, saber-toothed cat, and short-faced bear that seem straight out of a scary storybook. One that you wouldn't want to read to your children. But over time, things changed. The environment shifted, and humans arrived. These changes were too much for these ancient animals, and so slowly they disappeared, leaving behind their bones for us to find and wonder about. Today, if you go on a South American safari, you might spot lazy sloths in Costa Rica, jaguars prowling Brazil's jungles, and vicunias roaming the Atacama Desert. But millions of years ago, this continent was home to some of the most terrifying and bizarre creatures ever to walk the earth. From snakes the size of a four-story building and enormous carnivorous birds to the biggest shark to ever exist, prehistoric South America was a literal horror show of strange and formidable beasts. One of the most fearsome of these creatures were the terror birds, also known as forest racidae. These birds were taller than an adult human, with beaks that could snap bones like twigs. They were the top predators in South America for millions of years, striking fear into the hearts of smaller animals. These birds ranged in size, with the largest species, like Kalenkin, standing around 10 feet or 3 meters tall. Their long, powerful legs made them swift runners, capable of chasing down prey with ease. Their massive beak, up to 18 inches or 46 centimeters long, was perfect for crushing bones and tearing flesh. These birds were pure carnivores, preying on small mammals, reptiles, and possibly other birds. Picture a bird as tall as a basketball hoop sprinting across the plains with its sharp beak ready to strike. It's no wonder they were considered terrifying hunters. The structure of their bodies was built for both speed and strength making them efficient predators in their environment. Terror birds roamed the open plains and forests, thriving in various environments from grasslands to dense forests. They were highly adaptable, which helped them survive for such a long time. Their keen eyesight and excellent hearing allowed them to spot and catch their prey quickly. These birds were not just hunters, but also scavengers, taking advantage of any available food sources Despite their fearsome reputation, they played a crucial role in their ecosystem by controlling the population of smaller animals. South Americans should be really grateful these giant birds have gone extinct, because humans would have been among this population of smaller animals. Moving on, let me introduce you to the super croc of South America. Sarcosuchus, or the super croc if you will, was a colossal prehistoric crocodile that dominated the waterways of South America during the early Cretaceous period. This beast existed around 110 million years ago. It could reach lengths of up to 40 feet or 12 meters and weigh as much as 17,500 pounds or 8,000 kilograms. Its appearance was pretty freaking intimidating with an elongated snout filled with over a hundred sharp conical teeth designed for gripping and tearing flesh. Sarcosuchus primarily inhabited river systems and swampy areas where it was the apex predator. Its diet likely included fish, turtles, and even dinosaurs that ventured too close to the water's edge. The size and power of Sarcosuchus meant it could ambush large prey using its immense bite force to capture and drown them. This giant crocodile had a heavily armored body with thick bony plates called osteoderms covering its back. These provided protection against potential threats and helped in thermoregulation. 
The nostrils were positioned on top of its snout, allowing Sarkasuchus to breathe while mostly submerged, a useful adaptation for ambush hunting. Fossil evidence of Sarkasuchus has been found in various locations across South America, indicating it had a pretty wide range. Now let's talk about the one true threat of prehistoric South America, Andrusarkus. While this creature was not exclusive to South America, fossils suggest it could have roamed parts of the continent. Andrusarkus was one of the largest carnivorous mammals ever, resembling a giant wolf with a long snout. It stood about 6 feet or 1.8 meters tall at the shoulder and measured up to 16 feet or 5 meters long, including its tail. Its powerful jaws meant it could crush bones and tough hides with ease. Andrusarchus likely fed on large herbivores, carrion, and possibly even smaller predators. Its open plains and possibly forested habitats tell us it needed a large territory to support its dietary needs. The massive skull and jaws, capable of delivering a powerful bite, made Andrusarchus a formidable predator and scavenger. Its powerful limbs and large clawed feet suggest it was also capable of tackling larger prey, possibly even other predators in its territory. The skull of Andrusarchus, measuring around 3 feet or 1 meter long, indicates that it had a strong sense of smell, which would have been essential for tracking down prey and scavenging. Its teeth were sharp and robust, designed for tearing flesh and crushing bones, making it one of the apex predators of its time. The combination of its physical prowess and likely opportunistic feeding habits allowed Andrusarchus to thrive in a variety of environments, from open plains to wooded areas. Now for the next animal. I have to say, if you have a fear of snakes, you might want to skip this one. Titanoboa was the largest snake ever discovered, and it slithered through the rainforests of prehistoric South America around 60 million years ago. It could grow up to an astounding 42 feet or 13 meters long and weigh over 2,500 pounds or 1,135 kilograms. Honestly, just think of it as the boa constrictor's enormous daddy who never skipped a meal. This serpent was a carnivore with a diet that included large fish, crocodiles, and possibly even other hefty reptiles. Titanoboa likely used its incredible strength to constrict and subdue its prey, wrapping around them in a snake-sized bear hug that no creature could escape. Titanoboa thrived in the warm, humid rainforests where there was plenty of food and not much competition from other large predators. These dense, swampy forests were the perfect backdrop for Titanoboa's life. With its massive size and insane constricting power, Titanoboa ruled its environment with an iron, or rather, scaly grip. Now, for those who find insects and arthropods creepy, this next creature would have been their worst nightmare. You're about to find out why. Arthropleura was a giant millipede-like creature that lived during the Carboniferous period, around 315 to 299 million years ago. Creepily, it could reach incredible lengths. It could grow up to 8.5 feet or 2.6 meters long, making it one of the largest known land invertebrates of all time. With a segmented body and numerous legs, it was similar to modern millipedes, but much larger. But despite its horrifying appearance, Arthropleura was likely a herbivore, feeding on decaying plant matter and possibly small insects. These guys lived in the moist, dense forests where they could find plenty of food and shelter. The humid and warm climate of the Carboniferous period provided an ideal environment for such large arthropods to thrive. Their sheer size and numerous legs were its most distinctive features. And while it wasn't a predator, its appearance would have been enough to frighten any would-be attackers. Moreover, the fossilized tracks of Anthropleura suggest it moved with a snake-like motion, undulating its body to navigate the forest floor. Its outer skeleton was probably tough and likely provided good protection against predators. This armor, combined with its size, would have made it a challenging target for any modern carnivores. While Arthropleura was not aggressive, its massive armored body and intimidating presence made it a dominant force in its ecosystem. 
and now for one of the largest land predators of all time, Giganotosaurus. No list of prehistoric South American creatures would be complete without mentioning Giganotosaurus. This giant theropod dinosaur was one of the largest land predators ever. It could reach lengths of up to 43 feet or 13 meters and weigh around 8 tons. With a massive skull, sharp teeth, and powerful hind limbs, you bet your ass it was a fearsome sight. As a carnivore, it preyed on large herbivorous dinosaurs. Its size and strength allowed it to take down even the largest of prey. As for its habitat, Giganotosaurus lived in the open plains and forests of what is now Argentina, an environment rich in prey. Its size and power, coupled with its ability to hunt and take down large dinosaurs, made it one of the top predators of its time. The skull of Giganotosaurus alone measured up to 6 feet or 1.8 meters in length and was equipped with sharp, serrated teeth designed for slicing through flesh. Besides that, its robust build and strong tail provided balance and support during high-speed pursuits. Studies of this dino's fossils suggest it had a keen sense of smell, which would have been important for tracking down prey over large distances. Its large brain case indicates it had a well-developed sense of coordination and agility, crucial for a predator of its size. Giganotosaurus likely hunted in packs, using coordinated strategies to take down enormous prey. Now before we move on to the next predator, let's talk about one of the more unique and bizarre-looking dinosaurs that roamed the prehistoric South America. Carnotaurus, literally meaning meat-eating bull, was a truly strange dinosaur, known for its weird appearance and terrifying reputation. This theropod dinosaur, which lived approximately 70 million years ago, was characterized by its distinctive bull-like horns above its eyes and a very short, deep snout, measuring about 30 feet or 9 meters in length and weighing around 1.5 tons. Carnotaurus had a slender build with strong hind legs that made it a fast predator. Its jaws were equipped with sharp teeth designed for slicing through the flesh of its prey, which likely included smaller dinosaurs and other creatures of its time. The horns might have been used in fights with other Carnotosaurus, either for territory or mates. Carnotaurus lived in the semi-arid regions and plains of what is now Argentina, where its speed and hunting skills were vital for survival. Now it's time to leave the land behind and dive into the prehistoric oceans, where the most formidable marine predators ever lived. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the Megalodon. While not exclusive to South America, the presence of Megalodon in the prehistoric oceans around the continent is worth mentioning. This giant shark was the largest predatory fish ever. It could grow up to 60 feet or 18 meters long with a massive torpedo-shaped body and jaws filled with rows of sharp teeth. Megalodon was a carnivore, feeding on large marine animals like whales, dolphins, and other sharks. Its powerful bite could crush bones and tear flesh with ease. This gigantic shark lived in the warm coastal waters where its presence indicates a rich marine ecosystem. The size and powerful jaws on this creature were definitely its most distinctive features. Now let's go from the ocean to the prehistoric skies of South America, because that's where you'll find the largest flying bird ever, Argentavis magnificens. This giant bird, sometimes known as the giant pteratorn, had a wingspan that stretched up to 23 feet or 7 meters with a body length of about 11 feet or 3.3 meters and weighing around 150 pounds or 70 kilograms. Argentavis flew high in the skies of prehistoric South America during the late Miocene, approximately 6 million years ago. Its powerful wings enabled it to glide effortlessly over long distances, likely in search of carrion, which made up the bulk of its diet. It had strong, sharp talons, and a beak well adapted to tearing flesh, suggesting it could also hunt small to medium-sized animals if necessary. Moreover, living in open terrains and grasslands, Argentavis used its keen eyesight to spot carcasses from high above. Its size and flight capabilities were impressive, making it a dominant presence in the skies and 
a top scavenger in its ecosystem. Next up on the list is another massive dinosaur that once thrived in the prehistoric landscapes of South America. This was Maposaurus, a giant carnivorous dinosaur that lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 97 million years ago. It was discovered in what is now Argentina. This theropod dinosaur was closely related to Giganotosaurus and could grow up to 33 feet or 10 meters in length and weigh around 3 tons or 6,000 pounds. With a long, powerful tail and robust limbs, Mapusaurus was built for speed and strength. Mapusaurus had a skull filled with sharp, serrated teeth, ideal for slicing through the flesh of its prey. Its diet likely consisted of large herbivorous dinosaurs, such as the giant sauropods that shared its habitat. Fossil evidence suggests that Mapusaurus may have hunted in packs, which would have allowed it to take down even the largest prey. The habitat of Mapusaurus was pretty diverse, ranging from open plains to forested areas. This adaptability helped it thrive in the varied landscapes of prehistoric South America. The region it inhabited was rich in dinosaur fauna, providing ample hunting opportunities for this top predator. Build-wise, Mapusaurus was quite muscular, with strong legs that supported its large frame. Its long tail helped with balance and agility, making it a formidable hunter. The discovery of multiple individuals in a single quarry suggests social behavior, possibly hunting in groups or living in family units. Next, let's turn to a more nimble and swift predator, Thylacosmelis. Often referred to as the marsupial saber-tooth, this was a remarkable predator that lived during the late Miocene to Pliocene epochs, approximately 9 to 3 million years ago. Resembling the saber-toothed cats of North America, Thylacosmelis was actually a marsupial, related more closely to modern kangaroos and koalas. It measured about 5 feet or 1.5 meters in length and weighed up to 220 pounds or 100 kilograms. Its most striking feature was its long, saber-like upper canines, which could grow up to 5 inches or 13 centimeters long. These teeth were used to deliver lethal bites to its prey, which likely included small to medium-sized herbivores, like ancient relatives of llamas and tapirs. Unlike true saber-toothed cats, Thylocosmelis had a pair of protective flanges on its lower jaw to protect its delicate upper canines. It lived in various habitats, from forests to grasslands, and its unique predatory adaptations made it a formidable hunter. It had strong forelimbs and retractable claws, which helped it grapple with prey, and its keen sense of smell likely made it an effective ambush predator. Also present in the South American jungles was the Purusaurus, an enormous prehistoric caiman. This giant reptile could grow up to 41 feet or 12.5 meters in length and weigh over 8 tons, making it one of the largest crocodiliforms ever discovered. With a powerful jaw and conical teeth, Purusaurus was another top predator, feeding on large fish, turtles, and even mammals that ventured too close to the water's edge. Its massive size and strength allowed it to take down large prey, including possibly other large reptiles and even terrestrial animals that came to drink. This reptile inhabited the rivers and swamps of what is now the Amazon Basin, thriving in a warm, wet environment rich in resources. Fossil evidence suggests it had a bite force far greater than that of modern crocodiles, which meant it could crush bones and shells with ease. Now from the water, let's go back to the land where the largest ancient rodent ever lived. This was Josepha artigasia. It roamed the forests and grasslands of South America during the Pliocene to Pleistocene epochs, approximately 4 to 2 million years ago. This giant rodent could reach lengths of up to 10 feet or 3 meters and weigh over 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms. With large, ever-growing incisors, it likely fed on a variety of vegetation, including tough plants and possibly even tree bark. These incisors were also likely used for defense and possibly even digging. Josepho Artigasia's size and powerful jaws would have fought off many predators. It lived in a range of habitats, from dense forests to open grasslands, showing a high degree of adaptability. 
The massive size and strange teeth of Josepha artigasia truly set it apart from all other prehistoric creatures. Its lifestyle might have been similar to that of modern capybaras, living in social groups near water sources and feeding on aquatic plants. The discovery of Josepha artigasia's fossils in Uruguay provides valuable insights into the diversity of rodent species and their evolutionary history. With that said, it's now time to talk about a small yet remarkable creature, the Pteridaustro. This was an extremely unique pterosaur that lived during the early Cretaceous period, around 105 million years ago. This flying reptile had a wingspan of about 8 feet or 2.5 meters and a body length of around 3 feet or 1 meter. What made this creature so unique was its elongated spoon-shaped lower jaw filled with hundreds of fine, bristle-like teeth. These teeth weren't for biting or tearing, but for something much more delicate, filter feeding. Pterodaustro likely waded into shallow waters, using its beak to strain food from the water, much like modern flamingos use their specialized beaks to filter feed on tiny crustaceans and algae. It lived in coastal and freshwater environments, where it could find plenty of food and suitable nesting sites. The discovery of well-preserved Pterodaustro fossils in Argentina has provided valuable information about the anatomy and lifestyle of this remarkable pterosaur. These fossils have shed light on the incredible diversity of pterosaurs and their adaptations to different ecological niches. Truth is, the more we learn about Pterodaustro, the more we appreciate how varied and specialized these ancient reptiles could be. From their filter feeding habits to their long flights, Pterodaustro was yet another reptile that made prehistoric South America a complete nightmare. And now to end our list, we have a cross between a hippo and a rhino, the Toxodon. This was a massive herbivore that roamed the plains and wetlands of South America during the late Pleistocene epoch. Standing around 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall at the shoulder and weighing approximately 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms, Toxodon had a stocky, barrel-shaped body, supported by short, sturdy legs. Its large, elongated head featured broad, flaring nostrils, and its body structure resembled a cross between a rhinoceros and a hippopotamus. Its teeth were adapted for grazing, indicating that it fed on a diverse range of vegetation. These included grasses, leaves, and possibly aquatic plants. Its strong jaws and specialized teeth allowed it to efficiently grind down tough, fibrous plants, making it a crucial part of its ecosystem by keeping plant life in balance. The habitat of Toxodon was quite varied. It thrived in different environments, from open grasslands to dense forests and wetlands. Its adaptability to different climates and terrains allowed it to spread across much of South America where it coexisted with a variety of other prehistoric animals. Finally, Toxodon's robust build and size likely helped it fend off predators. However, it still had to be cautious of large carnivores, like the saber-toothed cat, Smilodon. Fossil evidence shows that Toxodon lived in herds, which would have provided additional protection against predators. The herd behavior also suggests a social structure that may have been similar to that of modern-day large herbivores. In the end, from the skies dominated by Argentavis, to the waters ruled by Purosaurus, and the lands roamed by giants like Glyptodon and Josepha Artigasia, the continent was a showcase of insane monstrosities. Each of these animals played a vital role in their ecosystems, creating a dynamic and often dangerous world. The tales of these prehistoric creatures remind us of a time when survival meant being the biggest, baddest, and sometimes even the strangest. If you've seen the 300-year-old human mummy that came out of Alaska, you already know that what's buried under the Antarctican soil is going to be a lot more frightening. What else can you expect from a land where temperatures are even lower than those on Mars? It truly is an alien continent. But it wasn't always like this. It was a place full of life, with dense forests and terrifying creatures, massive theropod dinosaurs, prehistoric crocodiles, and the most fearsome reptilian of all, the Mosasaurus. All roamed Antarctica because long ago, this continent was not the icy desert it is today. 
But there's one thing about it that never changed. Just as humans can't survive in its environment today, they couldn't even dream of setting foot in prehistoric Antarctica. And in this video, you'll find all the reasons why. Here's the first one. In 1990, a crazy discovery was made in the remote, rocky expanse of the Transantarctic Mountains. The remains of a massive, meat-eating dinosaur. It took over two decades and numerous expeditions to carefully extract the enormous predator's bones from the frozen crags of Mount Kirkpatrick. This dinosaur, named Crylophosaurus, meaning frozen crested lizard, was aptly named for its distinctive head crest and its ability to endure the freezing, three-month-long darkness of prehistoric Antarctica. It is also affectionately known as the Elvisaurus, named after singer Elvis Presley. Scientists can only speculate about the head crest's purpose, but as with the human Elvis, it was probably a sexually selected characteristic, meant to attract the female of the species. This 25-foot or 7.6-meter South Pole hunter turned out to be the largest known early Jurassic carnivore on Earth. A true nightmare from the frozen past. And it wasn't alone. Antarctopelta, meaning Antarctic shield, was a herbivorous dinosaur from the Cretaceous period that also inhabited Antarctica. This ankylosaurian dinosaur measured about 13 feet or 4 meters in length, making it relatively small compared to other ankylosaurs. But despite its small size, it was pretty tricky trying to classify this guy as it displayed traits from two different families of ankylosaurs. Unearthed on James Ross Island in 1986, it became the first dinosaur ever found in Antarctica and the second to be formally named from the continent. This discovery not only shed light on Antarctica's ancient inhabitants, but also posed new questions about how dinosaurs adapted to survive in such extreme polar conditions. Like its armored relatives, Antarctopelta was a robust, herbivorous quadruped, protected by thick plates embedded in its skin. Although only fragments of its skull have been found, they reveal a skull heavily reinforced for defense, complete with a striking suborbital spike over the eye. Its leaf-shaped teeth, with serrations concentrated near the snout tip, suggest a diet adapted for chewing tough vegetation. In addition to this formidable dinosaur, another chilling discovery has emerged from the icy depths of Antarctica. A colossal soft-shell egg of ancient origins. Unearthed around a decade ago and recently identified by researchers at the University of Texas in Austin, this fossilized marvel sat neglected in Chile's National Museum of Natural History until now. This egg, resembling a squashed football, at over 11 inches long and 7 inches wide, is believed to be the largest of its kind ever found. Dating back around 66 million years, just before the dinosaurs met their end, it offers a glimpse into the mysterious world of an extinct marine reptile, a mosasaur. These monstrous predators, reminiscent of the aquatic giants from Jurassic World, likely laid such eggs. By comparing the egg size with those of modern reptiles, Scientists estimated the mosasaur that laid it must have been over 23 feet long, excluding its tail. Fossilized bones of juvenile and adult mosasaurs and plesiosaurs found in the same Antarctic rock formation further reinforce the shocking find. Large mosasaurs often occupied the top of the food chain in the Cretaceous oceans, dominating their ecosystem with their formidable presence. Antarctica, with its rich prehistoric tapestry, hosted these fearsome mosasaurs alongside one of its terrifying kinds, the Kaikaifilu, and mysterious giant eggs. If this doesn't reinforce the icy continent's reputation as a land of ancient nightmares, let us introduce you to the Elasmosaurus. It took decades of battling harsh weather on a small, desolate island off the Antarctic Peninsula, but scientists have finally unearthed the heaviest known Elasmosaur. This ancient aquatic reptile which swam the seas during the Cretaceous period alongside the dinosaurs, would have weighed as much as 15 tons. Now, it stands as one of the most complete ancient reptile fossils ever discovered in Antarctica. Elasmosaurs belong to the family of plesiosaurs, some of the largest sea creatures of the Cretaceous. Plesiosaurs generally resembled large manatees with giraffe-like necks and snake-like heads, but they had four flippers instead of three. The newly described heavyweight elasmosaur belongs to the genus Aristonectes, a group that stands out from other elasmosaurs due to its distinct features. 
unlike their North American counterparts, Aristonecti species had shorter necks and larger skulls. This as yet unnamed elasmosaur weighed around 14.8 tons or 32,628 kilograms with a head to tail length of nearly 40 feet or 12 meters. While some previously known Aristonecti specimens have weighed around 11 tons or 11,000 kilograms, most other elasmosaurs typically weighed about 5 tons. For such a massive creature to thrive, there must have been an abundance of marine life to satisfy its appetite. The existence of these gigantic elasmosaurs so late in the Cretaceous period suggests that the aquatic world was thriving right up until the sudden mass extinction. Here's a question for you. Having a warmer climate is one thing, but can you imagine Antarctica as a landscape of steaming swamp and stinky forest? It became unbearably hot in summer, and even at its coldest, it hardly ever froze. This was the Arctic Circle 90 million years ago. And of course, in a place like that, you're going to find ancient relatives of crocodiles. Scientists believe a recent fossil finding proves early relatives of dinosaurs and crocodiles once roamed the lush forests of what is now ice-covered Antarctica. A new species of dinosaur, Antarctinax shackletoni, has been discovered. The name means Antarctic King, and rightfully so. The incomplete fossil skeleton is described as an iguana-sized reptile that hunted bugs and early relatives of mammals and amphibians around 250 million years ago when Antarctica was covered with forests and rivers. On its own, it just looks a little like a lizard, but evolutionarily, it's one of the first members of the big group of crocodiles and dinosaurs. So, it tells us a lot about how dinosaurs and their closest relatives evolved and spread. The researchers who made this discovery believe that during this time, Antarctica rarely dipped below freezing and was home to diverse wildlife. About two million years before the Antarctic King lived, Earth's largest mass extinction occurred, caused by volcanic eruptions that killed 90% of all animal life. The years immediately after the extinction event were an evolutionary free-for-all. Mass extinction wiped the slate clean and allowed new groups of animals, including archosaurs like dinosaurs, to thrive. Antarctodon is another extinct mammal from the early Eocene that existed in old Antarctica. It was about the size of a large dog and belonged to a group called Astrapotherians. The These were distinct relatives of today's elephants and manatees. The tale of Antarctodon began with a single tooth, a remarkable fossil found in Seymour Island in West Antarctica. This tooth, discovered by scientists in 2011, became the key to unlocking the mystery of Antarctodon sabrali. Back then, Seymour Island was part of a land bridge connecting Antarctica with South America, where similar creatures once roamed. What makes this tooth so special is that despite being just a solitary find, its shape and size give clues about what Antarctodon looked like and how it lived. It most likely used its teeth to chew on plants, much like today's herbivores, munching on grasses and leaves. But this discovery wasn't just about a fossil tooth. It was a glimpse into Antarctica's ancient past. It once again confirms that millions of years ago, this icy continent was a much warmer place. And up next on our list is the Australodelphus. This was a strange dolphin that lived during the Pliocene epoch millions of years ago. The name literally translates to Southern Dolphin, which was a testament to Antarctica's vibrant past. Discovered in the Sawsdale Formation on the Mule Peninsula of East Antarctica, this creature's fossils revealed a story of adaptation and survival in a world very different from today. The discovery of Australodelphus was a breakthrough in paleontology, shedding light on the unique adaptations of marine life in Antarctica. Its facial structure suggested a feeding strategy similar to modern beaked whales, using rapid mouth openings to create suction for capturing soft-bodied prey. Named Mirus, Latin for strange or wonderful, Australodelphus mirrored the mysteries of its environment. Its fossils, collected over years of exploration, unveiled clues about a time when Antarctica was connected to other continents and shared faunal connections across the Southern Hemisphere. Now for the colossal penguin. Unearthed from the frozen Earth, the fossilized bones of Pleodiptes Klakowski tell a tale of a true titan of the penguin world, towering over today's largest emperor penguins. This mighty bird, measuring a staggering 6.5 feet or 2 meters from beak to toe, 
and weighing in at a hefty 115 kilograms or 253 pounds roamed the shores some 37 to 40 million years ago. Back then, Antarctica teemed with penguin life, hosting a diverse community of 10 to 14 different species along its frosty coastlines. The discovery of P. Klikowski's massive bones, including an astonishingly long tarsometatarsus, a fusion of ankle and foot bones measuring a record 9.1 centimeters, tells us about its incredible size. While estimates suggest it stood taller than any known penguin, its actual height might have been slightly less than its length due to its upright stance. Compared to today's emperor penguins, which reach lengths of 4.4 feet or 1.36 meters and weigh about 46 kilograms or 101 pounds, P. Klikowski was a true giant. Even compared to its ancient cousins, it surpassed the previous height record held by another extinct species at around 1.5 meters tall. Its skeleton was notably different from modern penguins, making length estimates uncertain, but confirming its enormous size. Such giants likely had adapted skeletons that enabled them to dive deeper and stay submerged longer than small penguins, up to 40 minutes at a time, giving them an advantage in hunting fish in the frigid Antarctic waters. Also present in those waters was another penguin species, known as Paleodiptes antarcticus, also known as the narrow flippered penguin. It was a notably large species of penguin, with some variation in size among individuals. While exact measurements are challenging to pin down, these birds likely stood around 1.4 meters or 4.7 feet tall during their lifetime, making them slightly larger than today's emperor penguins. Among the largest known penguin species, Paleodiptes antarcticus was the final species of its genus. It's believed to have evolved from, or possibly coexisted with, Paleodiptes marplesi, another large penguin species. Over time, there may have been a slight decrease in size within the lineage. In this ancient past, another group of now extinct creatures lived. These were small marsupials called microbiotheries. These belonged to a special order known as microbiotheria, which includes the Monito del Monte, a tiny marsupial still found in the rainforests of South America. But these ancient microbiotheries weren't just limited to South America. Fossils tell us they also wandered into other parts of the world millions of years ago. It was a time when South America, Antarctica and Australia were all part of one big landmass called Gondwana. Back then, these little marsupials started their journey. The story begins in Bolivia, where the oldest microbiotheory fossils have been found. These date back to a time called the Early Paleocene, which means they lived over 60 million years ago. From their teeth, scientists have learned about Casia cordillerensis, one of the earliest microbiotheories known to us. As time passed, more of these creatures were discovered across South America. They roamed the forests and grasslands, leaving behind their fossilized remains for us to uncover today. In places like Seymour Island in Western Antarctica, fossil teeth suggest that microbiotheories also ventured into these colder lands during a warmer period in Earth's history. Even in northeastern Australia, clues have been found in the Tingamara local fauna. Here, fossils hint at the presence of early microbiotheories, showing us how these marsupials spread across Gondwana. They adapted to different environments, from the lush forests of South America to the icy shores of Antarctica and eventually to the diverse landscapes of Australia. Now let's talk about the extremely shady history of the White Continent to understand what exactly has been going on there. In the distant past, around 600 million years ago, a colossal supercontinent known as Gondwana stretched across the Earth's surface. This ancient landmass included what we now call Antarctica, nestled among other familiar continents like South America, Africa and Australia. Back then, life on Earth was a far cry from what we know today. It was a time when tiny, microscopic organisms dominated the seas, and the land was barren, devoid of visible plant or animal life. As time marched forward into the Ediacaran and Cryogenian periods, subtle changes began to stir under the surface of the ocean. Early marine creatures such as sponges tentatively began to appear, marking the beginnings of a gradual shift towards more complex life forms. These creatures paved the way for a new era, the Cambrian Explosion around 541 million years ago. During this remarkable period, Antarctica, then a part of Gondwana, enjoyed a relatively mild climate with expansive coastlines kissed by warm seas. It was a time when life flourished in the oceans, giving rise to diverse marine species. 
the story of Antarctica's ancient past takes a dramatic turn as we journey through the Devonian, Carboniferous and Permian periods. Fossil evidence unearthed from beneath the icy surface tells us that Antarctica was once teeming with life. Among the ancient swamps and lush fern forests, creatures like the Lystrosaurus also roamed. This herbivorous giant thrived in a world where towering trees and thick vegetation stretched as far as the eye could see. But the Great Dying, a catastrophic event marking the end of the Permian period, changed everything. This mass extinction event devastated life across the globe. Yet, Antarctica seemed to provide a sanctuary for the resilient Lystosaurus and other creatures. While much of Gondwana turned into a harsh, arid wasteland, Antarctica remained relatively temperate, sheltering a unique group of species. Fast forward to the Jurassic period, and Antarctica reveals more of its ancient secrets. Fossil sites like Mount Kirkpatrick take the covers off of a world unimaginable today. A world where dense forests of cycads and towering conifers stretched across the land. These primeval forests supported a thriving ecosystem of dinosaurs, synapsids, and flying pterosaurs. Among them, the Crylophosaurus, a fearsome predator resembling a smaller cousin of the mighty Tyrannosaurus rex, prowled the ancient Antarctic landscape. It was a time of giants and dramatic landscapes, where Antarctica stood as a hub of biodiversity. As the continents continued their slow dance across the Earth's surface, Antarctica witnessed the rise and fall of mighty creatures. Dinosaurs, including the majestic Glacialosaurus, roamed the icy plains and adapted to life in a land that knew no winter as we do today. The discovery of small pterosaurs like Dimorphodon hints at a sky filled with ancient winged creatures, adding to the diversity of life that once thrived in this now frozen wilderness. Throughout the Cretaceous period, as Gondwana gradually fragmented and Antarctica drifted southward, the continent's climate began to shift. Evidence suggests that inland regions cooled, possibly experiencing bouts of glaciation as the continent settled into its polar position. Despite these changes, Antarctica's ancient legacy as a cradle of life persisted, leaving behind a treasure trove of fossils and clues to its vibrant past. Today, Antarctica stands as a frozen frontier, its icy landscapes holding secrets of a time when giants roamed and ecosystems thrived. The fossils buried beneath its snow and ice continue to unravel the mysteries of Earth's history, reminding us of a time when this southernmost continent was anything but frozen, a time when prehistoric Antarctica was, in its own way, a place of insane diversity and pure evolutionary drama. Prehistoric Australia a land where the most normal spiders grow as big as your laptop screen. Snakes are seen swallowing crocodiles whole, and even something as harmless as a pine cone can kill you. Australia is home to all the scary things that will make you scream, holy cow! Pretty much every animal there is dangerous. In fact, it would be easier to list the non-dangerous animals. So here we go. Quakers. That's about it, really. But even with quaggas, you are in danger of being loved to death. So, proceed with caution. From venomous snakes to ferocious crocodiles, octopuses, and disgustingly overgrown earthworms, the great southern land truly has it all when it comes to nightmare fuel and creepy crawlies. Despite all this, Australia today is a cakewalk compared to what it was just 50,000 years ago. You can imagine prehistoric Australia was a scene straight out of a Jurassic Park movie, but down under. And the Varanus priscus is the perfect example why. Better known as the Megalania, this was a massive monitor lizard and a close relative of the Komodo dragon, which also had its roots in Australia before spreading to nearby islands. This giant lizard could reach lengths of up to 23 feet or 7 meters making it one of the largest reptiles to have ever existed. And here's a fun, or perhaps terrifying fact. Megalania only went extinct around 50,000 years ago. This means the first humans to reach Australia probably saw these enormous lizards up close and personal. This is why you shouldn't feel too adventurous when you're in Australia, because you can end up coming face to face with a lizard the size of a small bus. Megalania was considered one of the apex predators of Pleistocene Australia, which essentially means it ruled the territory with an iron claw. It probably ate whatever it wanted, 
from large mammals to other reptiles, and maybe even the occasional adventurous human who got too close. But let's not leave out the impressive features that made Megalania such a formidable predator. With its strong, muscular build, it could easily overpower its prey. Its long, sharp claws and powerful jaws were perfect for catching and devouring a variety of animals. And being closely related to the Komodo dragon, it might have even had venomous saliva, making its bite extra deadly. Despite its fearsome reputation, Megalania played a crucial role in its ecosystem, keeping the populations of other animals in check and maintaining a balance in the food chain. Its presence was a constant reminder of the raw power and unpredictability of nature. For the early humans and other creatures sharing its habitat, Megalania would have been the stuff of legends, an enormous, almost mythical beast that roamed the land. And so, this giant lizard is exactly what we mean when we say prehistoric Australia was pure nightmare fuel. It isn't alone in earning the continent its terrifying reputation though. The marsupial lion was an even shadier killer. Also known as the thylacolio, this lion roamed the Aussie land from around 2 million to 45,000 years ago. This creature can be seen as what happens when a wombat or koala decides it prefers meat over plants. Equipped with highly specialized teeth and jaws that functioned like bolt cutters, it was perfectly designed for a meat-based menu. The marsupial lion likely had a unique hunting technique, dropping onto its prey from trees above. This earned it the nickname Drop Bear, a nod to its tree-dwelling ambush tactics. This strategy would have made it a terrifying surprise for any unsuspecting animal wandering below. Now, this lion may not have been exceptionally large, but it stood out as one of the top predators and the largest carnivorous mammal to roam Pleistocene Australia. This killing machine was a true marvel of nature, even by Australian standards. Again, what set it apart were its highly unusual teeth, more reminiscent of a rodent than a typical predator. Its oversized front incisors were its main weapons, used for gripping and tearing, while its blade-like carnassial premolars sheared through flesh and bone with precision. The strength of Thylacolio's jaws were equally impressive. A 220-pound or 99-kilogram Thylacolio could deliver a bite force comparable to a modern lion weighing 550 pounds or 250 kilograms. This power allowed it to take down prey much larger than itself. Despite being only around 5 feet or 1.5 meters long, its tail, reinforced by strong muscles, provided crucial support during hunts, especially when tackling formidable prey like Diprotodon or competing with other Thylacolio males. Another unique feature for a marsupial was its retractable claws, a trait that kept its razor-sharp hooks sharp and provided superior grip on prey. Like today's leopards, Thylacolio likely used its climbing ability to ambush prey from trees. It was supported by its specialized rear feet with reduced first toes and rough pads for enhanced grip, just like modern possums. Scientists believe it evolved from a herbivorous ancestor, possibly related to possums, or sharing a common lineage with wombats and koalas. That's a pretty rare evolutionary path for carnivorous mammals, which typically descend from meat-eating ancestors. Regardless of its origins, Thylacolio was a feared predator in Pleistocene Australia. Its ability to climb trees and launch surprise attacks made it a standout predator. This combination of arboreal stealth and ground-based power ensured it could take down sizable prey. Speaking of swift, Quicana was another horror that once inhabited Australia. It's a genus of land-dwelling crocodiles equipped with blade-like serrated teeth and long legs that made them incredibly fast hunters. These scary reptiles could reach lengths of about 20 feet or 6 meters, making them a significant presence in their environment. Interestingly, they might have survived slightly longer than Megalania, with evidence suggesting they could have existed until as recently as 10,000 years ago. This means that the first humans to set foot in Australia not only had to contend with gigantic lizards, but also had to keep an eye out for these terrifying crocodiles. Encountering a crocodile that didn't just lurk in the water, but actively roamed the land looking for its next meal doesn't sound fun. The sight of Quincana would have been enough to send shivers down the spine of any early human. Its formidable teeth were perfectly designed for slicing through flesh, making short work of its prey. As a top predator, it likely dined on a variety of large animals, 
keeping the balance of nature in check with its impressive hunting skills. And with such a fearsome reputation, it's no wonder that the name Quincana comes from the Aboriginal folklore, where Quincans are known as evil spirits. In addition to the terrifying land-dwelling crocodiles and massive monitor lizards, prehistoric Australia was also home to giant birds of prey, similar in size to the Hest's eagle from New Zealand. These formidable birds would have been capable of taking down large prey, including possibly even early humans. Among them was the Dinotoneus gaffi, the largest eagle ever to have lived in Australia. With its impressive wingspan and formidable talons, it would have been a dominant predator, capable of taking down large prey and soaring through the skies with an aura of unmatched authority. Another remarkable avian predator from this time was the Cryptogyps lysitosis, Australia's only known vulture. This scavenger played a crucial role in the ecosystem, cleaning up after other predators and ensuring that no part of a carcass went to waste. And let's not forget the huge flightless birds. If you think a cassowary is frightening, these ancient birds would make them look downright adorable in comparison. With powerful legs and a fierce demeanor, these gigantic avians were more than capable of defending themselves against predators and would have been a force to be reckoned with. Then there were the giant kangaroos. Unlike their modern hopping counterparts, these enormous marsupials had short flat faces and likely walked on two legs. Procoptodon galia was the most extreme of these short-faced kangaroos. Even facing this guy would have been like meeting the Arnold Schwarzenegger of kangaroos. With its short, flat face and forward-facing eyes, it was always ready to scope out the next leafy branch to munch on. What really set this animal apart were its feet. Instead of the usual four toes, it sported a single, large toe on each foot, giving its footprints a superhero-sized impression. And those hands, each with two long-clawed fingers, were perfect for grabbing hard-to-reach snacks from the treetops. Then there was the creepy small Roma. Myolania, initially mistaken for a lizard due to its ornate skull adorned with spikes like a horned lizard, turned out to be one of the largest land turtles ever discovered. It's quite a confusion, isn't it? Scientists are still debating whether it belongs to the Cryptodera group, which tuck their necks under their spines, or the Pleurodera group, which bend their necks to the side. Myolania couldn't fit into either category due to its horn skull. Apart from its defensive headgear, Myolania sported a spiked tail, likely used to fend off attackers from behind. Much like the armored Glyptodons of South America during the Ice Age, various subspecies of this horned turtle existed, with some smaller ones found on islands off Australia's east coast, where creatures shrink in size over time on isolated islands. Unfortunately, these fascinating creatures disappeared from Australia and nearby islands about 2,000 to 3,000 years ago. Human activity, including hunting, is believed to have played a major role in their extinction. In places like Vanuatu, remains of Myolania have been discovered in ancient trash heaps, suggesting they were once hunted by early human settlers. Now, another ancient animal that shared a similar fate in Australia was the Tasmanian tiger. The thylacine, also known as the Tassie tiger, was a distinctive marsupial carnivore that inhabited Australia and Tasmania until recent times. Resembling a large striped dog with a pouch, it had a jaw-dropping appearance, characterized by a long snout, sharp teeth, and a powerful jaw. Legend has it that this creature had a jaw capable of opening wider than any other mammal. It was primarily nocturnal or semi-nocturnal, though it was also active during daylight hours. Its movements were described as slow and somewhat stiff, characteristic of its cautious and deliberate hunting style. Whether alone or in pairs, the thylacine typically hunted at night, utilizing its keen senses to stalk and capture prey. In terms of diet, they had a varied palate, preferring kangaroos and other marsupials, as well as small rodents and birds. With the arrival of European settlers, reports surfaced of the thylacine preying on sheep and poultry. However, the extent of this predation was likely exaggerated, perpetuated by noticeable photographs such as those by Harry Burrell. These images, whether intentionally or not, contributed to the belief that thylacines posed a significant threat to livestock, adding to their controversial reputation. But despite their suspected impact on livestock, thylacines mostly relied on native wildlife for sustenance. 
This is a sad tale of human impact on wildlife. However, up to this point, the largest of the Australian megafauna to have ever been discovered on the continent is the Diprotodon. Often compared to a rhinoceros, this animal holds the title of Australia's largest known megafauna. This herbivorous giant stretched about 10 feet or 3 meters in length, stood 6.5 feet or 2 meters tall, and weighed a whopping 6,100 pounds or 2,767 kilograms. Truly the heavyweight champion of marsupial mammals, fossil finds scattered across Australia suggest it reigned supreme in size during its time. Initially, scientists thought there might be different diprotodon species due to size variations in fossils. However, further digging revealed that these differences likely reflected gender distinctions. Males tended to be larger, a common trend in the animal kingdom. Like its modern cousin, the wombat, Diprotodon had toes designed for digging, although its colossal size probably limited its burrowing abilities. Instead, it likely used its claws to root out tasty roots and tubers. Its backward-facing pouch was a handy feature, keeping dirt out while it foraged. It's estimated these guys ate around 100 to 150 kilograms of plants every day, using its chisel-like incisors to dig up vegetation. But despite its impressive bulk, Diprotodon didn't have many predators until humans arrived in Australia around 60,000 years ago. Creatures like Megalania and Quincana were probably among the few that posed a threat. The mystery of Diprotodon's disappearance around 55,000 years ago continues to puzzle archaeologists. While human arrival is often blamed, climate change also played a role. As Australia drifted northward, it faced a drying trend that altered habitats and likely reduced food sources for Diprotodon. It's a classic case of survival in a changing world. Big creatures, big challenges, and a big mystery that keeps scientists guessing. In addition to the elephant-sized Diprotodon, Australia was also home to Thunderbirds. Genionis, known as the Jawbird, was among the last of the Thunderbirds to vanish from the Australian continent. It coexisted with early humans for about 15,000 years before its eventual extinction. Fossils found alongside human artifacts and cave paintings depicting flightless birds similar to Jenny Ornus support this timeline. Standing over 6.5 feet or 2 meters tall and weighing around 550 pounds or 250 kilograms, this goose-like creature wasn't the largest bird in Australia, but it was certainly a notable presence. Debates among scientists continue regarding its diet, with many leaning towards it being a herbivore. However, some believe it might also have been a scavenger, given its stout wings, powerful legs resembling hooves, and a massive beak similar to a magpie goose, though much larger. As for where it lived, Genionis thrived across a wide range of habitats on the ancient island continent, favoring open forests and savanna grasslands, Pieces of its eggshells found in sand dunes indicate it likely nested in these areas. As Australia shifted towards a drier climate over time, these habitats became more arid, favoring species like the emu over the Genionis newtoni. This environmental change is probably what led to the gradual extinction of Genionis. Now, speaking of birds, we can't leave out the most terrible one. The moa, found in nearby New Zealand rather than Australia, has a fascinating story of extinction. There were 11 types of moa, and the biggest, Dinionis, or terrible bird, was like a giraffe in size, reaching up to 11 feet tall, or 3.5 meters. When humans first arrived in New Zealand about 700 years ago, the Maori found a land full of unsuspecting animals. Despite their size, females were even bigger, towering over males by one and a half times, and weighing three times as much. Moa were gentle plant eaters, quiet and unafraid of these new two-legged predators. Living without natural land enemies, Moa had given up flying, and their feathers had changed into simpler, hair-like structures for warmth and waterproofing. Their huge eggs, a hundred times bigger than irregular hens, became a favorite food for the arriving humans, who quickly developed a taste for both the eggs and the giant birds themselves. In just a hundred years after humans arrived, Moa disappeared forever unable to protect themselves from this new threat. Proof of this fast extinction is found all over New Zealand, with moa remains discovered in old trash heaps, likely food for the growing number of wild dogs called curie that humans brought with them. 
These dogs, along with hunting by people and the use of fire to manage land, all played a part in the quick end of the mower. This is a clear example of how early humans helped make giant animals extinct all over the world during the last ice age. Since we've talked about New Zealand's largest herbivore, it's only fair to say a few words about its predator. Haast's eagle, also known as Harpajornis mori, was New Zealand's formidable predator that hunted the giant moa. With a wingspan stretching about 10 feet or 3.4 meters, and females tipping the scales at around 40 pounds or 18 kilograms, this eagle wasn't the largest flyer around, but it packed a hefty punch for its size. Instead of gliding gracefully like other birds, Haast's eagle relied on speed and quick turns for its hunting strategy. It's quite surprising to imagine a 40-pound bird taking down a 550-pound mower, but Haast's eagle managed this feat with relative ease. Despite its smaller wingspan compared to its height, which suited it for maneuvering in forested areas, Haast's eagle used its massive feet and claws, comparable in size to a modern-day tiger's, to swoop down on mower. It would grip the mower's back and break its spine swiftly, often before the mower realized the attack was coming. With no other land predators to compete with, Haast's eagle could feast on its kill for several days. But alas, the fate of Haast's eagle mirrored its prey. Once humans arrived in New Zealand about six centuries ago and made a hearty meal of moa and their giant eggs, the eagle's days were numbered. Without moa to hunt, this magnificent predator couldn't survive. Fading into history not long after its massive prey, it's a reminder of how quickly things can change when humans enter the picture, even for the mighty creatures of the past. Finally, in order to properly end this list, we've decided to do so with a small, spiky creature, Zaglossus haketi. Zaglossus haketi was a quirky critter that adds a spiky twist to Australia's ancient animal roster. It wasn't the biggest beast around, but for a monotreme or egg-laying mammal, it was pretty impressive. At over 3 feet or 0.9 meters long and weighing about 65 pounds or 29.5 kilograms. Today, you can still find smaller versions of Zaglossus wandering around Australia and New Guinea. They're often called spiny anteaters, even though they're not related to the ones in South America. Like its modern cousins, Zaglossus was covered in protective spines, making it a formidable creature in its time. Its hind legs were longer than its front ones, allowing it to stand upright and use its powerful claws for digging termite nests, a skill shared with today's echidnas. Its distinctive trumpet-like snout curved downward and housed a sticky tongue measuring 1.7 feet or 0.5 meters long, ideal for slurping up termites, ants, and possibly other tasty invertebrates like grubs, beetles, and worms. Interestingly, archaeological finds reveal a surprising twist. Remains of Zaglossus alongside charcoal and burn marks suggest the ancient Aboriginal people may have regularly cooked and eaten these spiky anteaters. This culinary tradition is further supported by cave paintings depicting creatures resembling Zaglossus aketi, placing both humans and this unique monotreme in the same historical era. All of this is without even considering the many deadly species that still live in Australia today. Venomous snakes, dangerous spiders, and other lethal creatures already roamed the land alongside these prehistoric nightmares. The combination of these ancient beasts and the already perilous fauna would have made the first humans to arrive in Australia feel like they had truly walked through the gates of hell. Everywhere they turned, there would have been a new danger lurking, whether it was a crocodile stalking through the underbrush, a giant bird of prey circling overhead, or a massive kangaroo striding through the grasslands. The early inhabitants of Australia faced an environment filled with creatures that seemed straight out of a nightmare. The sheer diversity and ferocity of these prehistoric animals highlight just how formidable and terrifying ancient Australia really was. Do you think prehistoric Australia was scarier than prehistoric Africa? Drop your thoughts in the comments below and we'll catch you in the next video.